Did, you've been sticking over here when I was out. No, no, no. Yes, she was. Don't you do that. She's got the knowledge. I'm okay, so you want me to read which verses? 4, 5, and 11? Or no, four, just, five, read, and just read verse 4 right now. 4, okay. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Okay. So the first thing he says, first thing he says is deception. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. The most important thing is coming out of deceive. Deceive. Then verse 5, we're going to read that. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You take notice that we see that deceive again. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name. How many of you know you got all kinds of cults, you got all kinds of they're already out there. Every place. And you not only call you got Joel Osteen, you got all these other people out there, you got all these people deceiving many. Some woman told me the other day, she said, uh, I don't go to church, but I watch Joel Osteen. Mm -hmm. I love him. We watched him when we was way here on Sunday. Okay? He's very pleasant. Oh, yes. Very pleasant. Very easy to live. And very encouraging. He's a public speaker. Exactly. So what happens is he's deceiving all those people that no matter what you believe, they'll be accountable. You're going to hell. So right here, Jesus says, "For many shall come in my name." Well, he's supposed to be a Christian. Right. Many shall come in my name, saying, "I'm Christ." Well, we had the Jeff Judge, and this is false prophecy, mm -hmm. and shall deceive. Many, 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 not few, many. And a very yeah. elect will probably be deceived too. Exactly. I'm going to ask you a question before we get to the next part. What keeps a person from being deceived? Never God's word. Knowledge. Everybody say this here. You're right there, but everybody say you've got to be in His Spirit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, when the Bible says try the spirits, rather than be of God. How can you try the spirit? Can you try a spirit being a fleshly person? No. Huh? Okay. Flesh cannot try something spiritual. <laughs> Jesus makes a statement. He says, if you, uh, uh, how do you say that? If you don't understand the things that are earthly, how can you understand things that are spiritual? The Bible says they are spiritually, what? What's the next word? Discerned. Discerned. So to try the Spirit, you have to be full of who? Jesus. The, Spirit. the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So we say amen. amen. And if you're for Him, like Sister Shirley, fast and praying, seeking Him, she heard something that no girl convinced her that she did not hear the Spirit of the Lord speak to her. So if you are full of Him, you have that gift, discerning of what? So when you get around something or somebody or something and so forth, you get this check inside of you. Well, yeah. It's not you, it's the spirit in you saying, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. not right. Come on, talk That's to me. Right. This is why I've said, and I've preached this for so many years, the most important <laughs> gift in all the gifts as we come into these last days is going to be what gift? Discernment. Because so many is going to be so close to the real thing. Jesus gave an example of the tares and the wheat. See, anybody can tell me the story of what's the difference between tares and wheat? Did you ever do a study? It's good, but the tares are the yeah. bad. The tares are the so. The tares of everything. The tares of everything <laughs> yeah. in the church. But tell, <laughs> tell me, in, in the natural, what's the difference between wheat and tares? It's just the difference. The tares rise up in pride, and the wheat bows down to the Lord. Well, that, that sounds, that's good too, but that's not what I'm looking for. The tares are weeds. Yeah, they're weeds. Okay, now listen. I mean, you're tearing them up. You they know, suck away all the good. nutrition from the wheat. See, you're all saying good things, but that's not what we're looking for. Wheat and tares, when the, Jesus talked about it, the servant command said, Somebody sowed <coughs> tares among the wheat. Let us go out and pull them up. He said, no, let them grow. Because at the end time, because you know, if you pull up the tares, you can up roots on the wheat and so forth. And I'm going to the, at the end time, the reapers will separate the tares of wheat. What's the difference? Okay. When they spread all the grind, they look exactly yeah. the same. 
Oh, exactly. oh, we already said that. When they grow together, they come up and they get heads on. They look exactly the same. But all of a sudden, that head, where it's supposed to be the wheat that you eat, turns black. Mm -hmm. The wheat will stick straight up, the terror will drop over it. So you should know them by their fruits or their works. Whatever, whatever. So a lot of people can fake it with right with you said the hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they set amongst us. That's right. Hallelujah. And really look so great. And they're straight from the pit. Yeah. They even come in and give big bucks. Big words, yeah. too. Now, mm -hmm. remember the story about Jesus when he went into the temple. The Bible says that there in the temple, a man had a what? The devil. Yeah. And what did that <laughs> man that had that devil, that devil in that man, what happened? Tell me what happened in that service. That demon in that man screams out, Has thou come to torment us before our time? Yeah, I was going to say before the time. We know who you are, the most holy son of God. Here's such a devil, a terror, right in the church. Mm -hmm. They don't even know it. Mm -hmm. But when the power comes in, when Jesus comes in, when the anointed one comes in, mm -hmm. devils can't hide. They just scream out. They're exposed. All you've got to do is, if you want to find out which, what's a devil or what's not a devil or a weed or a terror, just sit back a little bit and you should know them by their fruits. fruits. Everybody say that also means works. Mm -hmm. And what they do. They can hide it for a while. Oh, they can be peachy, peachy, lovely, lovely. I just love you, brother Humphrey. I love you, sister Susan. I just love you, brother Michael. You're just such a... But inwardly, they're weaving wolves. There's something wrong with that. Behind your back, they're knifing you. They're speaking evil about you. And you get this check in your spirit. You might just say good things to me, but I know that you have a devil in you. Did I share with you about the woman who came in and visited in our church? And when the praise and worship got with the high anointing, oh, she was praising, supposedly, up until the point that it got to that high worship. And she started literally chewing and gnawing at her hand. Oh my God. Oh remember what I told you about years ago when Pastor Larry Rick Roots? Oh my God. I, I was on the board and all this stuff. Anyways, I can't a woman <laughs> came into our church, sitting on the front seat. She only comes Sunday mornings. Sitting on the front seat. Just like Pastor Deb said, the praise and worship was going up, the power of God was there. She screamed, Cringing. stop it, stop it, stop it, I can't take this. I... And she's holding her ears. Mm -hmm. She opened up the double doors, went outside, and how she found it, she found a glass ball and took a brick and was stabbing her wrist. How I many you know that's an activity of spirits? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. In other words, you stick around, baby, with the anointing on your life, that devil's back up. <laughs> if you can get around in your life, please hear this, if you can walk a life, you do not cause devils to get worked up when you're coming around, there's something the matter with you. Mm -hmm. So say amen. Amen. Every place you and I go, we always see devils getting worked up. So say amen. amen. If we don't have a trail of devil activity, so say amen. Amen. Did amen. she know she was doing that? Did oh, she realize she was doing she that? She explained to me she had dry skin. <laughs> But how many of you know? But do know. you think she knew she was doing that, or do you think she was in a trance? No, she she knew. She actually, but she couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the spirit took mm -hmm. her over. Yep. This, and the woman that brought her also had spiritual problems too. Dear Lord. That woman brought a gift in and gave Jack one Sunday morning in the middle of the service because he started talking about how he liked flowers, and she says, "Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have something in my vehicle for you," and brought a plant in. And he was all excited at first, and after service was over, I said to him, I said, get that thing out of the house. There's a curse on it. Yeah. We didn't pray the curse off. We threw yeah. the thing out. But yet, curse and all, clean her out. You and Godly, mm -hmm. you deserve. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, 2411. Especially that guy, Mr. 2411. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay. Deception. Many false prophets. 
I'll tell you straight up, and don't, don't take me wrong. I, I'm not saying, oh, I'm really angry. Uh, forget me completely. Just say I don't even exist. But what I've seen through the years, I've only ever knew one prophet and one prophetess. And they're dead. All the rest of them is uh, thrill chillers. What are you talking about? They call themselves a prophet, and they go around and give people words of prophecy and so forth. That is so far fetched. Sounds good. Sounds good. But I'm standing back saying, whoa. Whoa. Because, see, a true prophet does not go around and just prophesy to people. That's the gift of prophecy working through the person. But if you're a prophet, you're hearing strictly from God, and when you hear from God, it's going to be all about judgment. Somebody say amen. Amen. You'll never find a true prophet prophesying anything but the things that God says are going to come to pass. So when you get these prophetess and prophets running around and they're prophesying all this good stuff to people, you better check that spirit real good. Somebody say amen. amen. The gift of prophecy is not the same as a prophet. Somebody say amen. Right. Fivefold ministry is completely separated from the nine gifts. And a lot of times they're, mm -hmm. oh, and they're coming and prophesying over you. Mm -hmm. I was just led one time and I was mean. I just said, hey, I want to tell you something. She said to me, she said, you need to get up there and prophesy like your husband. I said, when God tells me to, I will. But I said, now since you're bringing it up, I said, you get rid of them cigarettes and get delivered, then mm -hmm. people will receive your prophecy. You. And I said, you're going to be used greater until you, until you get rid of them cigarettes. She did not. She had for many years. And guess what? Guess who she used to play for? Who do you think she played for on the platform? Do you ever hear of uh, R.W. Shambach? Who did R. W. Shambach come up under? A. A. Allen. How about Shambach? Shambach came. Oh, okay. She played for Shambach and A. A. Allen. What great miracles there were! You see what I see was missing, even though a great minister like that. Sure, he's rich. I thought A. A. Allen died of. Alcohol. Yeah, that, that was just a bunch of lies. Lies. So many lies out there. Catherine Coleman. They said exactly. she did too. Yeah. I she don't snuck. have no respect for her. I don't care what yeah, she did. That's what they well, said. Yeah, well, I, I never, never heard, heard that either. I did. Yeah, yeah, I heard it and I heard about alcohol. But how many of you know you can have a calling, an upbringing in your calling, but you can still be living in sin? Can I say that again? Do you know a minister, including myself, can operate in my calling, in our calling, and still have sin. And still not living me. The gifts and callings are without not repentance. God don't take it back. No, but he ain't pleased. Say what? No, he he can't be pleased. pleased. And bless it and it, it right. she just I said. mean. Right. But see, what they're not going to be as clear either. You're not going to hear as clear. I agree with what you're saying, but if you have sin, your anointing or whatever God's given you is not going to be it's as clear. Yeah. But they still <coughs> hear God. You're right and you're wrong. Oh, yeah. You're, you're right and you're wrong. Listen, when you operate in your calling, God will anoint that calling. Remember, the calling is not you. The anointing is not you. It's Him. <coughs> so His anointing, His presence will be up on it. Do you realize that in the Bible there is a, a prophet, that, that was a backslidden prophet, and God used him to prophesy, remember Bill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the true prophet of God, he said, uh, God told me that an angel came to me and said, you're supposed to come back and eat and drink with me. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get your eyes so much on a person. It's always on Jesus. And always, 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 including everybody with me or your sisters or and me with you. Let's stay in the spirit because if you're led of the spirit, you'll know what's coming up and what's not coming up. Yeah. Now you were talking about operating in your calling. And, uh, 
and living in sin. Um, one, uh, one speaker shared a story about uh, a man who had a healing ministry. He laid hands on the sick and, uh, and then get miraculously healed. Thing was, uh, after he told his service, he'd go back to his hotel and uh, pleasure himself. Yeah. And yeah. This, well, well, the problem was uh, a demon had wrapped itself around his around his arm, mm. ca causing him to do it. Apparently, at some point, he opened up a door, and that demon, uh, you know, uh, took advantage of him. Thankfully, oh, yeah. thankfully, it was cast off of him. Mm. It was a painful process, but he got it off of him. And now he doesn't do it anymore. See, what brother Marcus put out here is so important. Have you ever heard me say this? In these latter days, it's so important to choose your or what? Very what? Careful. If you hang around people that's not living a holy life and so forth, that spirit can get over you to call a compromising sinful spirit. That's right. Somebody say amen. Amen. You get in the spirit, and I can tell you straight out, when you're in his spirit without sin, you can feel evil or sin or something coming in or, oh, come on, people. Absolutely. But don't think because somebody's laid hands on somebody and they got healed that that was such a powerful man of God. Listen, he did not heal anybody or deliver anybody. The Spirit of God healed and delivered. So I say that. Amen. It's all him. My daughter, when she was living in sin, okay, <laughs> she was in an affair. She was living with a man, and I knew that she heard God. She was used great and mighty when she was walking with God. Well, I showed her a video of a man singing, and a friend of mine said to me, I think I found my soulmate. And well, as soon as I listened to it, I'm like, okay, they're speaking all the right words, okay? But when I looked at that man and I listened to it, I, I, I didn't say nothing to her other than, you tell me, is this of God? And I played it. She said, absolutely not. And she started to tell me some other situations. She still was used, and God still spoke to her to speak the truth of the discernment, even though she was not living for God. Mm -hmm. But the gifts are without the call of repentance. Does, well, God, does God, the Spirit of God, does He convict all mankind of her sin? Yes, he does. It's born and instilled into every person there is a God. That's why it's avoid when people don't feel it. Okay, let's let's move on here. I want to say amen. Amen. Uh, I hope we're getting something out of this here. But let's go to 24, starting verse 21, 25. Sister Joan, uh, pick up with uh, two, three verses, and I'll probably stop it. There you go. Any okay. questions, any statements, or anything? You want me to start where? Yeah. Yes. 21. Thank I'm just going to say, anytime Jesus uh, says something more than once, it's very important. <laughs> yes. Say what? Anytime Jesus would repeat himself, himself or say exactly. something more than once, exactly. it's very important. He needs to pay attention to if, if, it's, if it's done twice or three times, it's considered what? Confer confirmation. Confirmation. Is, you know, is that means it's established. But he's, if he says, truly, truly, I mm -hmm. say it to you. Or if he speaks something over and over, and you find. In this chapter, deceive, deception. So, mm -hmm. so with now, listen. This is going to jump ahead on, but I think this is uh, Annabelle's book is here. This whole chapter is about being deceived. In other words, minister come in my name and see me. But th then he talks about uh, all the things that will happen, and people will not realize what's going on because they're not awake. They're sleeping. Go ahead, sister. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Okay. Uh, now, somebody tell me we, we studied Revelations. So there shall be what? What's the next word? No. What's the next word? Come on, everybody. No. Go ahead and read. For, for then there shall be what? Great. Great. Great tribulation. What time period is he talking about? Last days. What last days? We know there's seven years of the, the tribulation period. The first three and period. a half? See what? The first three and a half? No. The first three and a half is called the tribulation period. But the last three and a half is called what? Great, great tribulation period. 
That's why I said I had to be great tribulation. Yes. So remember the first three and a half is hellish. But it's not like the last three and a half. So now this is what he's saying here. He says, uh, for then shall be great tribulation talking about last three and a half, such as was not since the beginning of the world to the, to this time, no, or ever shall be. In other words, there's no time ever before this that's going to be so hellish as what he's talking about here. Now he's going to say, now according to what we've been reading and teaching so far, when does it sound like we're getting out of here? He said pre the first three and a half. So what? He said that we will get out of here after the first three and a half. Sounds like it, because I cannot find any place pre trip No place. Somebody the other day said to me, whoever was talking to you, they said that. Uh, I believe in pre trip. I said, show it to me in the Bible. They said, I can't. I said, show it to me. Guess what? They couldn't. Just because we believe something does not mean it's true. Somebody say amen. Amen. If, if it does not say it in the Bible, then it, I don't receive it. Can I say it again? I'm not going to believe anything except it says it in the Bible. Okay? So, I'm going to talk about great church. Verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there shall uh, should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay, that's so important. If, if I could just get people to stop reading the Bible and study it. And except those days, what days? The last three and a half. Except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. Saved. What's that mean? Okay, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So he said everybody's going to die. When it says shall be saved does not mean salvation. It means not going to die. But it's going to be so hellish. Because we already read the book of Revelation about one third here and one third here and one third here. That the whole world has been affected by death. The blood and blood and sudden all this kind of stuff. So everybody's dead every place you look. Okay, somebody say that. Uh, and then he says... Uh, verse 24, we'll just read it. 23, verse 23, 23. Rather. 23, Sister Sue. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Okay, now he just said something here. What's he talking about here? That if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, here is Jesus, or there he is, believe it not. What's he talking about? Deception. Yeah. Jesus is over here in a secret place. Je come, come over here. Jesus is over here. Jesus is out here in the desert. Oh, Je Jesus is over here in this temple over here. Follow me. Follow me. Let so nice me take nice. you to this great move of God over here. <laughs> Years ago, we went up there to that prophet that could have been up there close to Harrisburg. And what a stinking mess that was. I mean, I knew some of you pulled in the parking lot. Who is it? Parking lot and so forth. Whoa. You went Something. to see him for that, right? Yeah. When I went to see him, I told Annabelle here the other week on the phone. I said, I went and I encountered Jezebel sitting right in front of me. Right. Okay? I mean, literally. And when I looked up on the platform while he was playing on his keyboard, all that stuff they put behind the screen, I saw nothing but demons' faces all over the screen. Now, let me, let me say something here. Deception. Is he a prophet? Yes. Has he prophesied things that's true? Yes. But, how many of you know, you can get so deceived yourself that the devil can run you off and Come on. Mm -hmm. See, when I went in there and that music was so loud. I never went back. God said, don't go. That music was so loud that they passed out earplugs. That oh my yeah. our hearts literally quick. Brother Roger Boggs and the people was long, Brother Tim and his. And we could not sit there because it was always vibrating your guts inside of you. I said, let's go. And then they'd pump it out of smoke all smoke, across the and place. And smoke smell like, yes. which is yeah. an imitation of what is to be God's so yeah, true yeah, See, the smoke represent the, 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 where Isaiah 6 says, it smoke filled the temple. Mm -hmm. So here's this smoke, you can even taste it. And then. What was going on? Was there singing any kind of gospel? No. It was these three guys up there dressing 
mirror stops and dance girl and people, they say, everybody come to front and dance. And people's up there just running and dancing. Now, here's the thing. What should we do about the people? They were deceived. Mm -hmm. They believed that here is a prophet of God, mm -hmm. it is a great move of God, and they run in accepting anything that's going on. As gospel truth. And as gospel truth. truth. You know, and then you know the girl that told us to go. Yeah. Remember she was in the church. Answers. The young girl asked us to go. And she we asked went. us to go? Yeah. Like, and she yeah, was I, I know who you mean, but I'm Black right. hair. But I told well, you anyway, not to go. Well, anyway, we went. And she's sitting there laughing. And she said, what's the matter? I said, we're getting out of here. And she started laughing. And she said, I knew you one night. Mm -hmm. I knew you went. Oh. Well, she knew then we were going to zern. They come back mm -hmm. down the hallway and they come to me. He said, is there a problem here? He said, music too loud. I said, no, this is the problem. I said, you tell him and everybody here, it's time you all get saved. Yeah. You said it's like a nightclub. Yeah, exactly. it is. Right. It's hard. Yeah, so right. But anyways, make a point. I'm trying to make a point here. Just because God uses you right. does not mean that you can't be deceived. Now, how many of you know there's a lot of true ministers that are out there preaching the gospel but that spirit of deception got on them. This is okay. This is okay. This is okay. And they start to, and after a while, deception causes us to become what? Deceived. Totally. See blind. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see. You can't hear. You can't understand. So if you try to talk to somebody that's deceived, you might as well hang it up. You're talking to a stone. That's right. They aren't going to hear anything you have to say. And remember, the Lord would not, His Spirit would not always strive with us, He'll. That's why I turned our server to what kind of mind? I went to a special thing they had uh, there, and they had different rooms and different stations. Well, they had the furnace room where there was a prayer. Then they had another room where they literally had wine glasses and wine bottles and a sofa and all the blaring music that you were sitting there getting drunk in the spirit drinking your wine. What church was this? Life Center. Life Center. Okay, I'm familiar with Life Center. What was this person's name? The one that there was there, the prophet that night, Kim Clement. And he didn't have one fresh word. Everything he said that night was what he already had on the Elijah list. Okay, now, we can go on and on there, but thank God. But I hope that we're trying to get it clear. The importance of being deceived. Yeah, yeah and you got to listen when God says. You know, exactly. he told me, don't go back. You know, I'm not going back. I'm not oh, yeah, you. Yeah. See, they... If God deals with us about something, mm -hmm. and He does it once, twice, a couple of times, we better stop taking time to listen. What's, what are you trying to tell me? What's going on here? But we can get to a kind of place that I've heard people say, that used to bother me, but it don't bother me no more. What happened? You became immune to it. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't get strong enough to withstand it. Oh, well, God turned your reprobate mind. Okay, Can I so, say something? Yes, sir. Well, anyway, I um, was in a church where I knew the woman was gloriously saved. Mm -hmm. I don't say her name. But we can't, when they do, if they do mess up and you know they're saved, you've got to overlook that and know that they love the Lord. But they flubbed up that time. Well, this glorious lady, she said, uh, to Jim's mother, and Jim's mom called me and she said, so-and-so told me, and she said, so me, I'm not led to do it. And I said, yeah, and I'm, I'm discerning too, and don't do it. She said, uh, she came to her and told her, if you pay my way to Israel, your family will get saved. Different ones will get saved. I said, don't do it. Because she wanted to go to Israel so bad, but I overlooked it because I knew that she just let me, up. Let me say something else to you while we're on. There's a lot of ministers out there, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. uh, God just told me, t tell you, you've got to give uh, $10,000 a piece. Yeah. If you give $10,000 a piece, now, it wasn't God speaking, speaking not, not in all cases, but, but in a lot of cases. But people will move and do that, and what they gave that for comes to pass. Why? Because God honored their faith in the thing. They, they actually are the faith. They had faith in God. So God did not disappoint them. So, but we have to... Oh, I, and you can't, you can't turn away from everybody who prophesies because that turned me off for, for what I heard. And well, then I go, I'm just a babe in the Lord, and then I go to another church 
He says get forty two dollars and your loved ones will get saved. Yeah, I know. Forget it now. Okay. Listen to God, not me. I want to say something here. I've never seen this minister before, but I've seen her this weekend. Uh, he's calling people back. People get me on speaking over the dust and dust. But at the end of it, <coughs> here's a call for your blessed water. Mm. How many of you know there's no such thing as blessed water? Holy water. Holy water. Oh, they were selling bars of soap that was prayed over yes. to all the water. Then came to our door with jugs of water. That third water was the only water that was well, anointed. How do you know, if you want to get a healing or you want to get delivered and so forth, you do not get water from Brother Humphrey no. or from so-and-so. You get anointed. You get prayed and anointed. You get anointed. With what? With water? There's no such thing as holy water. Somebody say that. Amen. Let's move on. We don't want to get wrapped up in too much junk.